week five of the fantasy football season and he has tight end starts hits every matchup this week so tight end's been a very weak position so far the first four weeks of the season besides tj hawkinson andrews kelsey and laporta none of these tight ends have really been consistent and none of them have really put up fantasy points week in and week out but anyway the first game thursday night football chicago bears at the command is cole Komet finally had a breakout game over 80 yards with two touchdowns him and justin fields towards the end of the season last year we're on the same page, and I think this week here, Cole Komet could go out there once again versus a mediocre defense and have a good ball game. And like I said, at least this season, Komet has put up some serviceable numbers with seven or more fantasy points in the first three out of four ball games. So right now, with a decent matchup and coming off a monster game, he's a start for me. Logan Thomas, he's a sit. Injuries have been a problem for Thomas over the last few seasons, but I know the last couple weeks he's starting to get going once again in this offense. But Thomas is not a tight end I could trust. Tight end, like I said, I know it's been a crapshoot this season for the most part. But this week here, even in the plus matchup, I got to see a little bit more out of Logan Thomas to have him as a start. Jaguars at the Buffalo Bills in London. Evan Ingram, he's actually been a solid tight end this season for the most part. And him and Trevor Lawrence have had a good rapport over the last two seasons since Ingram's been there. So this week, not many tight ends I think are going to do much. I got Evan Ingram as a start. This game could be out of hand early and often where they're going to have to throw the football 40 or 50 times is this Jacksonville Jaguar team. And at least Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk have been decent options in this offense with Calvin Ridley being inconsistent, Zay Jones being banged up, and Trevor Lawrence not getting the football in the right spots. But this week, I think Ingram in a game where they're going to be down and throwing a lot is a start. Now to the Bills, Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox. Both these guys, they're not getting enough volume. They're not putting up any fantasy points really. And most of them, mostly they've been dropped in a lot of fantasy weeks. So this week here, even in a pretty decent matchup, I can't trust these guys. And I both have them as sits this week now to the New Orleans Saints at the New England Patriots. Jawan Johnson, I know he's banged up with an injury. We don't know if he's going to play in this ball game. And Jawan Johnson, I know last season he was a touchdown machine with Andy Dalton in there for this New Orleans Saints team. But right now he hasn't done anything this season. And even if he comes back from injury, he's a sit. Forced him on row. He was good. He beat the issues in the offseason and signed with the same team. And if he does step into a starting lineup here, he's been a guy throughout his career up and down. Even though I know he's played with Derek Carr his whole career with the Raiders and now he with the Saints. But he's not a tight end I could trust. He's a sit. And now to the Patriots, Hunter Henry he got off to a hot start the first couple weeks of the season. But he's fizzled out lately. But I think in this matchup, this Patriot team, they're going to have to find the better ways to throw the football. And what's better than a security blanket? at the tight end position in Hunter Henry because Juju Smith-Schuster really hasn't done much this season for this Patriot team. Devontae Parker and Bourne haven't been good receivers at all. And right now, I think Hunter Henry in this one could get peppered with targets, especially if Bailey Zappi does play in this ball game. possibly. I think he's a quarterback that could get the ball to the tight end a little bit better, even though I know him and Mac Jones have a good rapport. But anyway, Hunter Henry is a start because, like I said, tight end's a weak position. And Henry, at least, he's had some upside this season and found the end zone twice. Now to the Titans at the Indianapolis Colts, Chigga Kwongo. We saw some flashes last season from him, but anyone in this passing game with this Titan team, I can't trust. They got one of the worst offensive lines in the league. Ryan Tannehill holds on to the ball a lot as well, which doesn't help. And Kwongo, he really hasn't shown much this season in fantasy. So right now, he's an easy sit for me. Now to the Colts, I know they got three tight ends operating at times Mo Alley Cox, Andrew Ogletree and Colin Granson but none of these players are consistent I know we, a couple weeks here and there they find the end zone of these guys but they're not going to put up huge numbers I know Anthony Richardson he looked good last week spreading the football around coming from behind 23 nothing tie in the ball game and ending up losing in overtime but anyway like I said these tight ends over there in Indianapolis they're just not consistent and that play is I'm going to count on so this it's now to the Ravens at the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mark Andrews, he's a start each and every week. Last week, it was good to see Andrews find the end zone a couple times in that ball game. And like I said, this Raven offense rolls when Lamar Jackson gets his running going and gets the ball to Mark Andrews. And that's exactly what happened at the Browns in that blowout victory. So this week here in another division matchup, I think Mark Andrews rolls once again at Pittsburgh, even though I know they're pretty decent defense and has a good ball game as a top two, top three tight end, a sit Darnell Washington. So Washington most likely is going to be the tight end fitting in for Fairmouth, who's going to be out two to three weeks with injury. But right now, it's a, a lot of injuries over here in Pittsburgh. Kenny Pickett banged up 
we don't know if he's going to play in this one. Obviously, Fear moved out. And Deontay Johnson had a few more weeks as well. So Darnell Washington maybe could catch lightning in a bottle and be a decent option this week. But right now, going into the week, he's not a tight end that hasn't done much in his NFL career, even though he's only been in the league for a cup of coffee so far. But he's a sit for me. Now to the Panthers at the Lions. Hayden Hurst, week one, he had a good pop game. A lot of people went out there to the waiver wire and picked him up. But right now, he pretty much hasn't been part of the offense over the last few weeks. And it's tough with a rookie quarterback in Bryce Young, even though a young quarterback's best friend and security blanket act obviously should be the tight end. But that hasn't been the case with Hayden Hurst. Yes, he could go out there and have a good ball game. But like I said, tight end's been a crapshoot this season. And most guys haven't performed at all. So this week here... In a mediocre matchup, Hayden Hurst not really a tight end like I trust, and he's a sit. Sam Laporta, like I said early in the video, he's been one of the top five tight ends in fantasy football in his rookie season. And right now, he's going to have a good matchup at the versus the Panthers in this one. Laporta, he's the second main target on this offense behind, obviously, Amon Ron St. Brown. Jameson Williams possibly could come back in this ball game, but I'm not worried about it. And Sam Laporta, he's a matchup problem for linebackers. And even safety. So this week I have him as a start. Now to the Texans at the Atlanta Falcons. Dalton Schultz, it was good to see him have a touchdown and 13 PPR points last week for this Texans team. So CJ Shroud's doing a great job spreading the football out. And I think this week here, Dalton Schultz can have a good ball game at the Atlanta Falcons. Another indoor game here. Young quarterback looking for the tight end I could see in this ball game where more defense is going to roll coverage to Nico Collins, who's had two monster games already this season. So this week, Schultz, he's available still in a decent amount of fantasy leagues. I actually like him as a top 15 tight end in the start. Kyle Pitts, I just can't trust him anymore in fantasy football. He had one decent ball game this season. And obviously, it's not 100% all his fault. Desmond Ritter, he just can't get the football to Kyle Pitts. But right now, Kyle Pitts, I know a lot of fantasy owners, sixth, seventh round, they spent the pick on him. But he's been inconsistent in the football. Only 11, 12 catches on the year for Kyle Pitts. And right now here versus a pretty decent Houston Texan defense. He's a sitting out to the Giants at the Miami Dolphins. Darren Waller, he's only had one pop game the whole season here versus the Cardinals in week two. So right now, Waller hasn't done much. But this offensive line hasn't given time, obviously, to Daniel Jones, which has been a huge problem as well, where as soon as he dropped back in that week four game, there was a defender in his face at all times. So right now, in a matchup versus a mediocre to poor defense so far this season, I think Waller can make a few plays. Tight end, like I said, is a crapshoot, and you just got to throw out some of these top guys that you drafted fifth, sixth round in your fantasy league and hope for the best at the tight end position. So Waller, I think this week this giant team is going to get him more in the game plan, and they have to if they want to have any chance to score points with this high-powered Dol Dolphin offense. Now to the Dolphins, Durham Smythe is a borderline option here for me. Durham Smythe, I know last week he finally made a few plays, but there's weeks He's going to have good weeks and find the end zone, and there's weeks he's not going to do much. We saw last year with Mike Kosicki. He had a few ball games here and there, but this team, they don't really use the tight end. They use three wide receivers, and the back out of the backfield are getting the targets. Obviously, there's a tight end in there every play, but they're not really making the plays. So, Smythe in a good matchup on paper is a borderline option for me. Matchup Cincinnati Bengals at the Arizona Cardinals. So over the last few seasons, the tight end position hasn't really been a big part of this Bengal offense in terms of production and putting up fantasy points. I know Hayden Hurst, he had a couple games for them here and there last season, but now with Irv Smith Jr., he's been banged up a little bit once again this year. To start the year, he hasn't done much, and Tanner Hudson's been the backup, so right now, I don't like any of these options, and no one on this Bengal offense has done anything really this season. I know Jamar Chase had one good ball game, but he's frustrated he's not getting the football, and I think in this game, Jamar Chase is going to get peppered with targets, especially if T. Higgins is out, so right now, the tight end position, like I said, has been non-existent for Cincinnati. And both these guys are sits. Now to the Cardinals. Zach Ertz, it's been a solid year for him once again. He beat the timetable, making it for week one with the knee coming off the ACL and MCL injury. And Zach Ertz, he's had eight or more fantasy points in three out of the first four ball games. So this week here versus a mediocre to poor Cincinnati defense. We saw last week they got torched in that game by the Tennessee Titans. I think Zach Ertz, he's a smart guy. He knows how to get open. He knows how to use his body. And he's just a target machine for the young quarterback. In Joshua Dobbs. So once again, I got Zach Ertz as a start. Now to the Eagles at the Los Angeles Rams. Dallas Goddard, he's been very disappointing so far as well in the early going. Week one, he had a goose egg. Then weeks two and three, he had eight fantasy points. 
and then last week he didn't do anything as well so right now this offense is pretty much run with DeAndre Swift AJ Brown and Devonta Smith in the past game but like I said tight ends a very weak position and sometimes you just got to throw guys out there this Dallas Goddard situation is like the Kyle Pitts situation where he don't have a quarterback obviously he's got Jalen Hurts one of the better quarterbacks in the league so I think this week here at the Rams you could throw him out there and it wouldn't be surprising to me if Goddard could have a game where he has 70 yards and a touchdown or a ball game once again where we see him catch two balls for like 28 yards or something so right now this week here, I think you just got to roll with Dallas Goddard. He's in a high-powered offense. Targets will be there some games, and they won't. And I think this game could be a surprise, and he has a good one. Now to Tyler Higby, opportunities might be taken away from Higby, obviously, with Cooper Cup possibly coming back in this game. But like I said, there's games where Higby has those pop-off ball games as well. And so far this season, he's been in the top 10 in fantasy points at the position. So right now, in a ball game where they could be trailing early and often and chasing points, versus Philadelphia Eagle team. I think Tyler Higby's a tight end you just throw out there and see what you get. And that's what you got to do with majority of these players right now who have decent upside. It's just, just put them in your starting lineup and hope for the best. Now to the Chiefs at the Minnesota Vikings. These are two top-notch tight ends, obviously, in fantasy football. Travis Kelsey so far, we haven't seen the patented ball game out of him. But here in Minnesota in a potential shootout, over 50 points combined between these teams he's a star tj hawkinson one bad game three good games a season he's a start once again for me we know he's a matchup nightmare we know this chief defense they've been a pretty solid unit so far this year but hawkinson once again is gonna roll in this one i believe and he's a tight end most likely in my rankings i'll be in the top three or four this week the next game new york jets at the denver broncos tyler conklin the last couple seasons here with zach wilson He's been a beneficiary in this offense with the Jet team. And last week, coming off a game with nine PPR fantasy points. This week, I think Tyrell Conklin needs to start at the tight end position. I think Zach Wilson has trust in him. He's one of the only players he really could get the football to is Conklin with Wil is Wilson. And obviously, a young quarterback's best friend and security blanket is the tight end. So I think Conklin, once again, could get anywhere seven to nine fantasy points. And the way the tight end position's been this season, and with buys now this week as well, He's a start. Adam Trotman pretty much hasn't done anything in this offense here for Denver. So right now with a tough matchup versus New York Jet team, one of the better defenses in the league. We even limited Travis Kelsey to an extent. Trotman is a sit for me. Now to the Cowboys at the 49ers. Jake Ferguson, believe it or not, he's been one of the top tight ends in all fantasy football. And points, targets, and just a guy that fits this Cowboy offense like a glove. So Dalton Schultz, he was a product for sure of this Cowboy offense. And I say this in a lot of videos that Dak Prescott always targeted the tight end. Jason Witten, Dalton Schultz over the last few seasons. And now it's Jake Ferguson getting rewarded with the targets and making plays. So pretty much in this Cowboy offense, the tight end position is the most second target is position behind C.D. Lamb over the last few seasons. So Ferguson, even in a tough matchup at the Niners, is a start for me. Because on the season, he has over 20 targets, which is very solid. For a tight end position the first four weeks, George Kittle's a start for me. I know Kittle this season, we haven't seen anything out of him besides week three versus the Giants, seven catches, 90 yards. Besides that, he's only scored 10 fantasy points the remainder of the season besides that one good ball game. So this week here, I think he could make some plays in the middle of the field. This Cowboy linebacking crew isn't all that great. And this week, Brock Purdy, I think, is going to lean on George Kittle more. The other ball games, it's been Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel more, but in this one versus one of the better defenses in the league, I think George Kittle is going to find his way in the middle of the field and make plays. In the final game of the week, Monday Night Football, Green Bay Packers at the Vegas Raiders. Luke Musgrave, he's been solid so far in his rookie season, but last week's ball game, he left with a concussion. But now with 11 days off, it's possibility he could start in this one. But going down to the wire in Monday Night Football, if there's no definite injury tag, on Musgrave if he's questionable that whatever I just can't trust him in this one I know it's a good matchup on paper well Christian Watson back in the lineup here some targets gonna be taken away from Musgrave so this week with all those factors he's a sit and out to the Raiders Michael Mayer the rookie so far we really haven't seen much out of him this year it's been a mess at the quarterback position Jimmy Garoppolo turnover machine in the early going and then Aiden O'Donnell I know he tried last week but he really didn't do much I can't trust Mayer in this one so that's tight end starts it's every matchup for week five of the fantasy football season